Welcome everyone to a new Pritz trainer with one of my favorite people in the world of chess, Grandmaster Surya Ganguly. Surya, welcome to Mumbai. Thank you, Sagar. Uh, just for everyone to know what an amazing personality Surya is. Firstly, he is a Grandmaster. His highest elo has been. Uh, 2676. He has been an Asian champion. He has been six time national champion of India consecutively. He has won some big open events in the world like Belt and Road Open, Fujaira Masters. He has been uh, uh, an individual gold medal at World Team Championships. And, you know, one of the things that has made Surya into such a potent force in the world of chess is his work with Vishi Anand. He has worked with him for uh, you worked for with him for three world championship matches yes. and he won all of them. Luckily, yes. <laughs> I, luckily for me that I didn't have to see him losing. Two thousand eight against Kramnik, ten against Gel, uh, against Topalov, and two thousand twelve against Gelfan. Uh, and Surya was part of the team. So Surya, a huge welcome to you. And uh, what is it that we are going to do in this Fritz trainer? We are going to learn some end games. So this has been in my mind for quite a long time and we have been discussing, right? Like uh, what will be my first project? This is my first project with you, right? Like, yes. In uh, fact, uh, this is maybe the first ever time we are sitting next to each other and recording something because generally we have recorded always. That's very true. On, on, uh, on online on Zoom or something. And whenever we are in person. Uh, Surya tells such amazing stories about chess and all that we could never record it. You know, they were always like something to have fun and uh, enjoyable. But I knew deep within that if ever I had to do something with Surya, it had to be something which was not super interesting. It had to be a little complicated, tedious because the way in which you teach makes anything interesting. Thank you for the for your kind words. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to do this uh, endgame uh, series. Okay, we start with Rook Pawn endgame. We will basically see uh, Rook 1 Pawn mostly. But we'll also see 2 Pawns, F and H. Okay. Because it's kind of connected. Uh, it, it often gets to 1 Pawn endgame. So it's kind of connected, right? If you take the H Pawn or F Pawn, it gets to 1 Pawn. So we will see this. How it is going to be different. You are going to see um, many different uh, tools. And understand things in a very different way. Of course, there will be uh, plenty of new examples, new patterns, uh, which at least I have never seen anywhere else, uh, whether it's a book uh, platform or online material. Uh, for example, this one, the current position which you are seeing on mm. the board, it's a very theoretical position. Probably you will just say by saying, you know, looking like, yeah, uh, you know, white is going to... Uh, win. What should white, uh, whether it's winning or not, yeah. firstly, but also how to win yeah. needs to be known. But maybe most of the players, you know, those who are seeing, they might know this is winning. Yeah, I get my king to, you know, advance. I go king b4, uh, king b5. I'm not yes, sure yes, everyone no. would know, but yes. But okay, okay, let's say, let's say, let's say even if some of them knows, uh, mm. they will say, hey, hey, I know this is winning. But my question is, by looking at the position, can you tell... If I start moving the pawns, like, you know, I move the pawn to d4, I move the pawn to d3, uh, the cutoff file is more, I move the pawn to c3, I move the pawn to b2. Mm. Each time, can you say this by looking at the position? I'll, I, yeah, I'll give you 30 seconds. Okay. Can you do this? I right can't. now you cannot, right? I cannot. But there are certain tools, which actually I learned very recently, like mm. uh, after the lockdown, very recently I learned. Uh, like this, you learn many uh, many tools where you can just look at the position, and literally in like you know less than ten seconds, and you you know the wow. whether it's winning or drawing. Okay. I'm very excited. Is it so, called Rule Five Six? This is Rule Five Six. Okay. Yeah, this okay. is Rule Five Six. You're going to learn that here. That's uh, just one of the things, you know. Mm. So, essentially, if someone's going to go through this roughly around four and a half hours of material related to the end games. They are going to master rook plus one pawn versus rook. And Would that be correct? And two pawns when it is f and h pawns. Then it's two. But essentially a majority of it revolves around this. And some very basic positions as well as some very tricky advanced positions as well. Partially correct. Uh, not fully correct. Uh, 
the way I uh, look at whether it's opening or let's say now we are into endgame so let's talk about endgame uh, the way I see it is uh, why do you do rook pawn endgame like let's say you are learning this position mm. what are the chances you think you will get this position in your game v very few probably never in your life mm. out of whatever you are seeing maybe you know one or two will come as we will see, you know, it came number of times in World Championship matches, in uh, players, you know, who are not rated, players who are 2800. So it keeps coming. But in your lifetime, what exactly you have seen, it may or may not come. Right. Then why are we spending so much time? Mm -hmm. Because I think there is this concept uh, with which we study endgame is uh, not ideal. I have often seen players, you know, trying to study endgame with the hope as if they are studying some opening trap. That mm. one day I will get this endgame and then I'll score the point. That is not my. Uh, that is not the way I think the endgame works. You are doing endgame to become a better player. Okay. Because endgame will improve your calculation. It will improve your uh, intuition. It will improve your imagination. And above everything, it makes you so alert. Because endgame, you make one mistake, you are gone. Mm. Your alertness level increases. It simply makes you a better player. Wow. So, whole concept is not, no, you are not going to only become, you know, better Rook Pawn Endgame player. That is not my aim at all. Uh, my aim is to make you a better player. Mm. And you are going to hear something which I don't think anybody says in introduction. So, sorry if it is not very encouraging or motivating, but I am just going to state the fact very transparently. Uh, once you go through the course, uh, you know, like in the first volume, we'll have the the theoretical part and so on in the second volume we will do more tests on those things uh, once you have gone through this you will beyond any doubt you will learn a lot of uh, a lot of technique a lot of tools to understand the positions better you will not be scared of uh, any such end games anymore uh, but the thing that i want to reach you know you will also get there currently how sure you are that you know a lot of group on end games or more or less you know not very sure not very sure right end of the session your understanding and your knowledge will increase more but you will become more unsure <laughs> seriously I, yes so okay. the con the thing is I, I don't understand this concept so clearly so being unsure being uncertain is actually very very good mm -hmm. if like you know I, I have worked with many top players and the more higher you know level they reach they have more clarity on how much they don't know so if you ask me or you know any any top player like go and ask him can you solve all rook pawn endgame one pawn his answer is going to be no he does not have that illusion or any top players they don't have that illusion that i know everything because it, they know it's impossible mm. so my idea is of course you are uh, you will get better no doubt on that but you will also be unsure which is good it makes you alert during the game right you know how one of the some of the greatest mistakes happens in uh, tournament games it's because many players are very confident that they know everything mm. and then kind of half remembering half calculating you make a move and it's gone we will see we will see many examples whether it's world championship match or you know tournaments like why can't 2800 players grandmasters at at every level how mistakes are happening brilliant well this is a very interesting because i feel this is not just now an end game course it's also about how you think how you approach uh, any position yeah. and also how you approach uh, psychology and just the way in which you look at chess i think we're going to learn all these things 100 percent. i mean i can ensure you that this is not going to be just an end game thing you uh, it will be it will be philosophical it will be talking about you know psychology during the game uh, there will be a lot of other things because for me uh, the something that i absolutely hate is memorization without understanding but right. i never memorize anything if you do not understand it and once you understand it you don't have to memorize it what i want all of you to do is understand certain things and every time figure this out during the game brilliant well this is going to be great fun so get ready uh, and all the positions uh, that will be given to you try to put your mind to it uh, try to solve them and surya i think there are a lot of interactive things that will happen we'll ask them a lot of oh, questions absolutely. absolutely so you will have to solve keep solving 
maybe you can have a chess board by your side maybe you can solve from your screen sure. or uh, like or, how you yeah. like it the best well i also like this you can when we say pause the video pause the video and if you can do it just close your eyes and solve it blind and think you in your head like these are yeah. five pieces close your eyes and say okay the king is here the yeah. rook is here could be very interesting that would be very interesting also yes so it's time to go on a journey into the world of rook and games and chess learnings with surya ganguly on to the next video